Good evening, friends, or at least evening, friends. Uh, it is Afterburner, Ryan Pinder alongside Rhett Warner following a 3 nothing loss. The Calgary Flames shut out at home by the St. Louis Blues, who, uh, well, played their sixth game of the year, their third road game, and they got a win over the Flames in a rather efficient manner Rhett this was not pretty and uh I'll, before we react uh, let's wind back to the end of this morning's barn burner where we uh said what do you think is going to happen tonight Dean asked that question what was your answer again when you said you had a prediction for tonight was it a loss and a closed door meeting oh you are at least one for two and I would suggest considerable probability of two for two here uh, we, we are moments after the game has ended Thank you for joining us here on YouTube. And if you're joining us later on on Spotify, Apple, Google, Amazon, anywhere you get podcasts, we appreciate that. Make sure you leave us a nice little subscription on YouTube, a five-star rating. Give us a like, all the thumbs up, all that great stuff. We appreciate it. Uh, you would be very nice to us. Nicer than the Calgary Flames have been to you. This has been a rough start, Rhett. They win their home opener against Winnipeg, a sloppy game that they outscored their problems and Markstrom was great. And since then, they played seven games. They've won one in a game where the Buffalo Sabres did not get much in the way of the goaltending. Uh, and this team is having a really tough time scoring goals. This was tough to watch. They're having a tough time keeping up in most departments. They haven't been good in their end. Markstrom's made some great saves. We, I guess you you got to give them that. So I'm sure there's one thing to be happy about. But yeah. the rest of it's really... The, the hardest part for me is that I'm not surprised by it. I'm you had kept, this was your fear. Yeah, this, this was, was your fear. fear. This was kind of my take all along, and it it sucks. And I actually don't think they're not like they're clearly not trying hard enough, but they might be trying as hard as they're capable of. I it, it isn't that the effort is bad; it's that there's mistakes. They don't have a lot of top end skill. And you're going to have to play really good structural hockey with their lack of top end skill. And it's just a little too loose still. You still saw odd man rushes, breakaway passes, a, a pass that went through three zones through three flames just to put a man on a breakaway. Like if you're going to win with this group, it's going to have to be airtight. And it's exactly not that. Well, the, the, the problem with winning airtight with this group is that they don't have the clientele to do it. It they've doesn't got, seem that way, right? I mean, two years ago, it. they were the toughest team to score on at even strength in the NHL. That seems like a long time ago. And yeah, that was when their top line, Lindholm, Gaudreau, and Kachuk were sensational. But we're talking about like team defense, a commitment to making it really difficult for other teams to get chances. That's not this group. It's looked mm -mm. like a very painful transition in this new D zone under Ryan Huska. And uh, maybe the boys are happy Daryl's not there, but the results are worse at this point. Yeah, I... I'm we can stop talking about whether it's Daryl's problem or Huska's problem. It's the guys in the room's problem. Always yeah. has been. No, that's I, fair. That's I always fair. thought that again, kind of pat myself on the back, but <laughs> it's, it's just blatantly true. It has nothing to do with who's coaching the team. It no, there's major issues with their stars because they're not stars and you're paying them to be stars and mm -hmm. they're at the age bracket where you're expecting not for improvement, but like, well, it's going to be diminishing returns and you're already 30. The valve shouldn't shut country. off. Yeah. It, it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's a horrible looking group right now. Nothing seems to fit. They don't look like a unit. They don't look like a group of guys that like playing together. They don't look like a group of guys that can keep up with the team. I don't think that anyone that's into the uh, watching hockey and is a fan of the NHL looks at the St. Louis blues and goes, man, that's whew, what a juggernaut. They the look like the Russian red army for a while out there. Like they were zipping it around. Like there was nobody's business. It was like, you're not allowed to touch the puck and try, mm -hmm. but you're not allowed to. It was embarrassing for a while. You, uh, if if I was going to envision how the Calgary Flames would beat this, the St. Louis Blues, it's exactly what the Blues did to Calgary. They were mm -hmm. organized. They didn't give up much. They got good goaltending. And with, with you know, not a super high-end skilled roster, they, they made the most of some chances. And the Flames didn't do what the Blues did. The way that the Blues won, I think, is the only way the Flames are going to win. Good goaltending, low-scoring affairs. Uh, and and all they can do it. They haven't shown it yet. That's just right? it. You keep, we keep saying that. It's like, yeah. Well, 
dream on big fella because it ain't happening and they yeah, like we're not committed to it and they don't do it and again i i honestly the saddest part for me is i don't think they're capable of doing it like this uh is not close to a winning competitive hockey team and one of the notions was okay so now that you have Huberto and Kadri and uh, Uyghur signed to these long-term deals. Those are the longest commitments the team has in terms of the players that are going to be around longest. They're not going to be bad enough to bottom out, so you may as well surround them and try to keep this window of you know being a playoff team open. They might be bad enough with those three guys locked in long-term that they can I, bottom out. I, and I, we talked about it off-air. Long-term, big picture. This might not be a bad thing. Right. Craig Conroy being in a playoff spot at the deadline would force some really tough decisions. If they're just not good enough and it's obvious, Rhett, isn't the path clear? We're 10% into the season, and they haven't outworked another team for 60 minutes. They haven't played a committed hockey game. They've had spurts here and there. Mm -hmm. They aren't good enough, and yes, that is the one positive that you can take from it. Gross that eight games into a season, you're kind of <laughs> saluting the fact that they're horseshit. Mm -hmm. like, that's what we're really doing. We're saying, well, at least they're really bad because then it makes Conroy's job easy. Well, and it's, and again, and it is, but it's, it's not, a, it's not a game reaction and it's not the micro, which a post game show is, but it, one of the biggest fears we talked about, what if the flames were in that mucky or mushy middle, whatever we want to call it in the West, what do you do with all these pending UFAs? What do you do with the trade deadline? It is so crystal clear. If this team is way out of it by us, Thanksgiving, what has to happen here. And I think even the owner at that point would have to acknowledge that. Yeah. Okay. We had a plan. It ain't working. Time for a new plan. Yeah, and don't give me the, wow, we just got to stick with it and it's going to come. And and because you know what? There will be a point. The worst team in the league last year, probably, I can't say for certain, mm -hmm. but probably had a couple game streak of putting some points together. Sure, yeah. Wins and the, so I don't need to hear the song and the dance that, oh, it's early and we're going to find our way and this. No. Mm -mm. You've played disheartened hockey for over a year. You don't mesh. The room can't be good. Even the comments two days ago after yeah, the already. Rangers lost. Like already. That's, that speaks volumes. Come on. Yeah, Let's no. just admit what we are. Uh, okay, lots to get to. We have our highlight of the game. We have our Hungry for More segment. We've got uh, a salute from Crown Royal and a bunch of other great partners that we got to do some, uh, some pay some bills with and tell you what they're up to, our partners. But first, uh, this is how the game ended for the Calgary Flames. A lot of empty seats and people making a lot of noise. Uh, not the noise you want in your home building. Have a listen. That is the final moments of the game. And I believe that's our boy Robert Munich, or uh, Bobby Germany, as we affectionately call him, uh, at the game tonight. Booed off the ice in their third home game. We liked a lot of what we saw against the Rangers. You just tipped their cap. They're a better team. We thought maybe the Rangers had four, five, six players better than the Flames' best player, and their goalie was all world. Could have won that thing if you get a subpar net money night from Shesterkin. You sure didn't. He was great. Road trip finishes with losses against Detroit and Columbus. It's now four losses in a row, and you're booed off the ice. So much for the fresh start. Yeah, well, it's not. It's, uh, I, again, it's not a one game thing where you're mad and they've. I'm sure we did this exact same show last mm. year after a St. Louis. It was uh, in January. They went on the road. They yes. lost, they blew a two goal lead in the third period to St. Louis. I think they lost in overtime or they lost late, whatever it was. Then they went to Chicago. They didn't play the kids. You knew they were going in against one of the worst teams in the NHL. They came out incredibly flat. They lost to Chicago. And that was like, oh my gosh, like it doesn't matter if they have an easy schedule left. These oh. guys, it's more about what they're putting on the ice than who they're playing. The what I'm gonna turn to corner here a little bit i didn't mind some of the young kids like oh, it, gilbert played well zadorov i thought played well i thought zadorov's been really good this year. It, it, the guys that you're kind of like <laughs> it shouldn't yeah. be relying you have to rely on everyone hockey's a, a tough sport but guys that aren't supposed to be the focal points were the only guys that you could look at and go okay good job guys 
Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's get to, uh, well, again, they got boot off the ice. One more thing. Uh, our boy, our always glass half full ray of sunshine uh, was out of his home today. So on these roads, on this night and this weather out of his house, he had this at the buzzer as a uh, tweet. Uh, that's a goosh tonight. That is correct. <laughs> that is indeed a full goosh. For the Calgary Flames, a 3 0 loss. Let's get to some of our segments. We start with the Betway highlight of the night. Betway, bet the responsible way. 19 plus Ontario only. You know the rules. Get it on the phone. Play along. Betway, thanks for being with us on Afterburner. I didn't have a ton here. You could have gone with a few Markstrom saves. You could have gone with a St. Louis goal. Uh, there was a lot of low light candidates. The turnover on the power play from Cadre was especially. Difficult. It stands as the winner. The Flames actually look pretty damn good zipping it around on the first half of that power play before that turns into the one nothing goal breakover. But that's not a highlight. So I found this, and I thought for a guy that came back into the lineup, and I shouldn't say 20. Uh, that's the Play the best out of them. I don't need – there's some guys that have big names and contracts, and I didn't hear their or see them on the ice tonight. Uh, speaking of that, Jonathan Huberto, Huberto was uh, – mysteriously absent and maybe not so mysteriously absent in uh, the second period at times as the lines went totally into the blender Rhett. like you we had all kinds of combinations we've never seen before i think at one point it was like sharon govich centering hunt and <laughs> huberto like there's some weird things going on uh three minutes and 43 seconds in the second period for huberto and he didn't get on the ice until they had a power play in the second uh this was ryan haska threw things in the blender and his best tasting ingredient was not Huberto. He he just said, "I'm making smoothies without you this period." Yeah, you went you went sour on me. I can't use. You, so. Yeah, that that's that eight notes. games in on his contract that just started. That's true. People forget that this is year and, one of that eight year deal. This and, is not year two. And in a situation where it's, I would say it's alleged that he was one of the main guys that wanted a change of, of coach. It right? wasn't like, a fit it, with him and Daryl. That's yeah. safe to say. Yeah. So, and gets that. And is pumping my Huskas tires and Huskas saying how great Hubert is going to be and how the summer, what a summer and we're ready to go and we're, I, I'm extremely sad and disappointed to watch that out there because, well, you know what it is. <laughs> we, what did I ask this afternoon? You tell me. What did you ask? I said, you think that he'd take his money and leave? <laughs> Yeah, I don't like trying to put my head in the, between the ears of someone else, and I've never met Jonathan, and I'm sure he might be a wonderful human. It's a really tough go right now, and I do wonder where his head's at, Rhett, but I, I certainly don't know how we'd be able to answer well, that on his behalf, right? Like, it's it's gone so bad that you wonder how it's going to go, and it's funny because I saw this on Oilers Nation today. Uh, there was a clip of Milan Lucci. So I'll, I'll, I'll bring it for the show tomorrow because it's a good conversation. And Milan talked about how tough it was in Edmonton. He had all these expectations, a new contract. He said he was angry when he was driving. He was angry at the weather. He was angry if someone cut him off. He was angry at the rink. And he he said, you know, everyone just said it was Edmonton. But really what it was, he was angry at himself because he wasn't living up to his own expectation. And it really did look like a reinvigorated Milan Lucic, not into a star again, but to a functional fourth liner when he arrived in Calgary from what looked like a liability his last season in Edmonton. And he just needed a breath of fresh air. How long does it take before Jonathan Huberto? It's just this environment's toxic. I can't get out of my own head. I, what happened to me? You saw the end of the game. And Milan Lucic... Like he got to get out of there because there was an equally bad deal with four years left on it in a trade. And Milan Lucic is a real tough competitor, not to suggest that mental health has anything to do with physical strength, but I do worry about where this goes for this guy from here because we thought last year was rock bottom. And this is frankly quite a bit worse eight games in. Well, and that's, again, back to a fear I had over the summer. Okay, everything's going to get better, except if it doesn't, then what? Yeah, because well, and the then what is, I think, uh, we're now we're into at. The RB territory, the, the forbidden words yeah. that uh, we haven't heard since Jay Feaster's era here as the general manager. And, and again, but the, like if you stop yourself and go, is it because they're not trying? Is it because they don't care? Is it? I just don't know if they can do it. 
I agree. I don't see a lack of try. I think they're more disorganized than you'd hope. I think Ryan Husk is probably frustrated that they're not playing with as much structure as he's he'd want, but I just don't see game breakers. I see all kinds of chances from bad angles and guys that don't see open teammates and, and really just, they have a tough time generating quality scoring chances tonight, especially. Like, that was okay. That so last. it's a 23 year old netminder, Joel Hofer, six, five, one eighty. That's a, that's a bean pole rep. It's like five, one eighty from Winnipeg and like handful of games in the NHL in each of the last couple seasons. Did they do anything to make his life difficult? That's the third backup they've faced this year. I don't remember. They've lost to ball around the net. all of them. Yeah. Like there's no, they've lost to three backups to Smith tonight. And then uh, there was another backup on that road trip. I'm trying to remember. Wasn't Washington Pittsburgh was to Smith and yeah. And, and uh, Detroit, it was Reimer. Like they are now that mark on the calendar. Like, ah, oh, we'll get our starters some rest. We'll get the backup in there. And, uh, you know, the, the blues scratched Verana tonight. There's a guy that scores like over a half goal a game in his career ish. I mean, when he's playing well, like an elite finisher. And I know there's, there's some issues around him off the ice, but like the blues didn't have to worry about, we got to be at our best tonight to be the flames. Like guys, let's go play a road game. Don't do anything stupid. Well, that's uh, yeah. The flames aren't this. It's it's piling on, but it's and it's pointing out to that's one not, game, and they lost three nothing, and they didn't do much in in terms. They're of, not fast. They're not physical. They're not defensively sound. They're not highly skilled. They're, what the are we? Like, whoa! What are we? Yeah. What are we playing to? It's uh. It's Those not coaches good. have to be. <laughs> Given that opportunity to be so excited to go and 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 it's how it usually goes, right? right? Your oh. first job in this league, you get it because something went horribly wrong. They keep coaches around that are having success. If shit hits the fan, then you need a new coach. So welcome to the NHL, Ryan Huska. Here's your steaming pile. Welcome to your first GM job, Craig Conroy. You're locked into two deals that look like they're really gonna incredibly limit your ability to compete. Like this is these are tough spots that these first year. GM and head coach first time GM and head coach are eight games into. I guess I give Husk credit for you can control the ice time. And he's starting to already. So right. you'll see that. I, I made a mistake saying Casey to Smith. I'm going to pull up the goalie that played for Pittsburgh. I was pretty sure it wasn't Tristan Jari. And so we'll, we'll pull up the box score and see what the heck happened here. Uh, Nadelkovich, there's your third backup that they played. Jari's moved along, or uh, Dismiss moved along to Vancouver, and we saw him play maybe that same night on Hockey Night. I was confused. Apologies. Let's get to some other segments. We're going to Hungry for more for our good friends at DoorDash. we got a deal right now, my friend. Restaurants, groceries, pharmacies, bakeries, flower shops, and more. DoorDash really has everything you need. Retro ordering is easy. Just open the app. Choose what you want, and it'll be left safely right outside your door with their default contactless delivery setting with DoorDash. You can order from multiple restaurants or stores in the same delivery with Double Dash and uh, without any additional delivery fees. So everyone can get what they want and need. Don't worry about cooking tonight. Get DoorDash on it. Also, a limited time offer, 25% off your first order and free delivery on orders of $15 or more. All you got to do is download the app and enter the code NATION25. That's NATION25. It's pretty decent value there. Got to love that. NATION25 for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Dash that for the win. Blues got the win. Uh, I'm hungry to see a little more of Ilya Solovyov. He was uh, an interesting fact. I don't know if it was on the broadcast or on Twitter I saw, but the first seventh rounder from the 2020 draft to play. This is a Belarusian kid that uh, has come a long way under the radar here. And for a D uh, group in, in terms of prospects that we thought was incredibly thin, he's the guy that gets the call. And I, he's intriguing, right? He's big. He's defense first. He's a very safe defender, quite the opposite of sort of the Jeremy Poirier profile, who will be a power play quarterback and rush up the ice. I want to see more of this kid. He's given you everything he's got, and I've, I liked what you said about the bottom half of the roster. Liked your fourth line guys. Liked your third line guys. Liked your young defensemen. Let's like see more guys of this that kid. are trying to make a name for themselves and show that they want to be there. Yeah, yeah. The, the guys that uh, have to prove they're NHLers to get big contracts. Those are the ones you, we're not really worried about right now. Uh, do what? Do you do you have any intel on 
Soloviev or, or any no. thoughts on what that debut might be like? Apparently, it just happened to be that he had some family in town and the kid was grinning ear to ear today. That That's a great story. The result is isn't, awesome. but I mean, I'd give you the line on him. Yeah, what's I mean, I've anytime a kid gets to come up and play a game, I mean, awesome. And I and you're right. Talk about under the radar. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm on top of everything, but I'd never heard of him. Yeah, well, we we started hearing solo, solo, solo in preseason. You're like, is this kid really like jumped ahead of a lot of these other guys in the depth chart? That'd be quite impressive. And sure enough, he had. And there he is. He, I believe, would be the uh, eighth defenseman to suit up for the Calgary Flames this season. It would be nine if you had uh, Oliver Shillington return this year. We don't know if that's going to happen. They could use a guy like him. He could skate and get the puck up the ice. Mm -hmm. uh, 16 and a half minutes for number 98, the Big Bell Russian. He had one shot on net, one shot missed the net, one block shot, and played the bulk of his minutes at even strength. He had, uh, let's see, just a, under a minute shorthanded. That was about it. Everything else at even strength. Welcome to the NHL. Be nice to a little found gem in the seventh round if that guy turned into a third pair big boy to play sort of a solid Branson play. role. Let's yeah. go. Let's play solid D, move the puck, make the plays that are there. Nothing fancy. Seventh rounder. Oof, that's a win. Yeah. It's, I'm hungry uh, for more goals, Ryan. Yeah, that's fair, man. There's so not let's a lot do of the math. For this team. Like, what are we averaging? One and a half? Well, they showed the broadcast. The first four games of the season, they're averaging over three and a half goals. And in the four since, because this is game eight, it's been like, we not so good. Here's uh, here's how it's gone in chronological order. Uh, reverse order. Zero tonight. One against Nerd. One goal on a two-game homestand. Mm -hmm. Stand up for your Calgary Flames. Uh, that's tough in front of your fans. One goal, two games. Two in Detroit at the end of that road trip. One in Columbus. So after winning with four goals in Buffalo, they've scored four in the next four games. That's One crazy. goal a game. Not going to do it. That's not... Uh, unless you got 27-year-old Mika coming in and uh, that whole decor from your 04 team, and you'd be able to clutch and hold and basically do... WWE wrestling in the crease. I mean, you're not going to win one nothing. No one wins one nothing in this league. A lot of comments saying uh, there are no more goals to come. <laughs> Who's going you, to do you, it? Hey, listen, you're I hungry for more. Hungry for I can it. be hungry for filet mignon. It doesn't mean I get I get it. Yes. Uh, but we are hungry for goals. Oh, how about Coronado? <laughs> Let's have him score a bunch of goals. Play yeah. Play the best out of him. You know what I think the problem is here is they, they started tonight's game with, I'm going to call them the money guys playing together. Kadri on the big deal, Lindholm who wants a big deal, and Huberto on the huge deal, the money line. Uh, they Everything went into the blender. So Elias, you want to prove you're worth big money. And the other guys, you've earned your massive contracts um, with play before they kicked in that was looking a little different than where you're playing now. But that that line... Is it's a, it's a lot of the issues they've had. It's not like Lindholm's been bad, but he certainly hasn't been a game-breaking, undeniable number one center this Ooh, season. And the other I two would... guys have been two year worse forwards. So you put all those guys together, and now what's left? Well, you know Backlund, Coleman, and Manjapani is going to be a trusted third line, but they're a third line. Yeah. And so now you have just spare parts left floating around. Like, is Dubé a center? Is Sharon Govich a center? Probably not if they're on the right team. How are all these other teams putting lineups together though right because it's not always just perfect cookie cutter this is how it's done no i mean you look at the bruins they lose their top two centers in krejci and bergeron and it's like oh well zaka you'll move up and be a number one center and then they have to find this max potras or something like that some kid that's like 19 of course he makes the team and he scored a bunch right he's like how do they do it Damn bruins. this lindholm guy is not helping himself well he's I, I think he's lost a lot of money i don't think what First off, I don't think you extend anyone no. when you're going through a run like this. You don't reward or lock into a team that doesn't win. What are you trying to know? Like, oh boy, if we could just crystallize this losing group and keep it together as long as possible. No, it's quite the opposite. So I think if this continues, th there's not a deal that he's going to be able to sign here. I think it becomes shopping him. And he's going to get seven years in free agency this wow, summer. The Maybe you could sign and trade him, but I don't think he's going to get what he wanted. And I think he really hasn't proven to be a $9 million well, player, frankly. I'm sure he'll get something and it'll be good enough. But if he keeps playing shitty, then I will say it's shitty because he's supposed to be coming out. Most guys in a contract year play their <laughs> hearts out, lead the right? Like they dominate, not yeah. 
disappear. He's he's screwing the Flames two ways. He's not playing good enough and helping us win, and he's playing bad enough we're not going to get as much in return. I'm looking at the comments. There's been some great comments tonight. Uh, Tampa doesn't need Vladar. That's one. Uh, Eunice Johansson, a second consecutive shutout. Two games this week for the Lightning. Zero goals allowed in both. Uh, two okay. shutouts for Johansson. So maybe that Vladar trade market isn't as robust in Tampa as we'd hoped. It's nothing here nor there, but I just saw the comment. Excuse me. All right. Um, we got to thank some pals that have been with us from day one, very early on. BK Beaufort Liquor, located on the Trans Canada Highway, just across from Windsport at uh, right beside the McDonald's there, the traffic circle. Go say hi to our boy Mandeep. He's a gem, loves what we're doing. We're so proud to be partnered with him, and we can't wait to get over there for an upcoming event that we want to tell you about in the coming weeks. You can find him on Twitter at BK Liquor and on Instagram at BK Beaufort Liquor. And again, you know, you know where it is, across from Windsport and your way out of town to the mountains. Go in, find something nice. Nice bottle of wine for wherever you're, you're heading. Or maybe it's just a cold six-pack of beer after your men's rec league at Windsport. Whatever it is, Rhett, they got you covered at BK Beaufort Liquor. Thank you, Deeper. Man, Deep is not going to be happy today. No, he'll be he'll be in tough. He'll be taking a tire. This is a tough one. This is a, uh, a tough one. It's also, tough. another guy. Sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. No, I was going to say it's tough for a lot of us because it's game eight. And it seems like there's a lot to be coming. That's 10% of the season, clear. right? By the time you're into uh, the second period of the outdoor game, you'll be 10% of the season. That's, um, it hasn't been painfully slow, but it has been painful. <laughs> also, a day one -er, Derek Newman of Newman Dean's Real Estate Group with CIR Realty, buying or selling, just let Derek know. You can come do the work for you. Email him at dnewman at carrealty.ca or you can call him at 403-619-6661. Some of the things he does, well, complimentary in-house home staging, consultation, uh, low pressure, easy to work with. I've known Derek uh, basically probably back to junior high school. One of the most uh, easy to get along with and hardworking people you'll ever meet. It's a great combination. Humble, hardworking, easy to get along with. Also, whether it's your first home purchase or not, maybe you've had a bunch, uh, They'll take time to understand your goals and help you with what you're trying to accomplish. Also, they can find homes off the market and they'll go the extra mile to hunt down the options you're looking for as a buyer. If you're interested in buying or selling your home in the greater Calgary area, give Derek a call. 403-619-6661. Get Derek and his network to work for you. Okay. A couple other items here. Uh, boot off the ice. Goosh, as Boomer said. No offense to be found. Last year, you had asked me a few times, what about just trade Jacob Markstrom? And I kind of said, well, Rhett, you can't do it. No one's going to roll the dice on a goalie that's playing 888 hockey. This is the year, you that Rhett, you have a very legitimate opportunity to trade Jacob Markstrom. If you wanted to, he has a no movement clause. I think we all understand how the UFAs will be approached if this team continues to play this way. But a guy that's got this year and two more left is Markstrom. What are you thinking when you see him playing like this and when you have a guy in the American Hockey League who you know deserves the opportunity to at least play or audition for a job in the NHL? I'm thinking it's got to be. People look and know. There and will be, yes. Here, here's the catch with Markstrom always, and the okay. whole thing it has been, is if you're willing to eat some salary, he's an easy asset to move. He's making six if he ate. One and a half to two. That's a really good value deal. Damn right. Two years left on it. Cap goes up for the, each of the next two years significantly, I'd suggest. It's, and if you moved to midseason, you'd be able to, you know, roll off a bunch of that cap hit. Uh, boy, it's uh, game eight. We're talking about trading the number one goalie with a no movement clause. How's it going so far this year? Well, but they, they should have been considering all this shit all summer. And they would, maybe were, but couldn't do it. Now it's becoming you. You. Hey, the the proof was right in front of us. We saw it. Yeah, no, there's 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 together. not enough lipstick to put on this pig to really believe yeah, what do you, for me to believe this, you is, think a, this that, is a team that can play in the playoffs. You think the yeah. owner and the coaches and the GM and the management want to go to the rink and watch the team get booed off the ice once a week? Like uh, and this is it's a more macro thing, but the owner is focused on certain things. When there are empty seats and when people aren't buying beer and people are leaving early and not spending as much money, that shows up very quickly in areas that he's noticing. I think that one area that this city would be supportive is if you commit to getting younger and better. I don't think it's going to be 
dead. I think people would say, this is the right thing to do. I'm glad they're doing it. I want to see some of the kids. Listen, uh, I there's going to be different games. There's ups and downs in every season. But this team, to me, the way they're built, it doesn't look good. I'm positive that the fans and the 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 true faithful bleed red Calgary Flames fans, mm -hmm. if you put out some kids that went and worked their ass off, they'd be just as happy. Maybe oh god, yeah, happy or right, yeah, maybe would... more supportive. Remember those Bob Hartley teams? They weren't great, but God, did they work hard? And mm -hmm. I know Bob wasn't a, a role model human, and he eventually, you know, burnt out that group, and he was gone, but. People got behind those teams, not because they won a lot, not because they played perfect hockey, but because you got the sense that they gave a shit. Yes. And, and these guys are, are trying, but it, it's not like they overwhelm you with their work ethic like those early Bob teams did, right? It's like, and I said it this afternoon, I said, I, it's, you get to that age where it's just hard to mm -hmm. come up with energy. Now, they're not all old, but some of the key guys are old and the younger yeah. guys are going to be held back or in check or, influenced at the very least mm -hmm. by how much effort and the attitude that the older guys put out right like for sure they read off of the effort of the older guys they just do and yeah it's, not it's there again it's very different I, the sad part again is i don't even know if it's a lack of effort i think it's partly no. lack of effort but it's partly i don't have it anymore that's the scary part if you're in year two of seven for nazim Kadri, mm -hmm. if you just isn't an impactful player anymore and you know i liked his energy against the rangers early i thought he had a bit of jump at times but that turnover just kills you you can't make wow. that mistake right you're already low scoring you're on a power play that's actually getting some chances moving around like oh geez and Mark if you had some time and they're looking they're zipping it around a bit turnover breakaway one nothing energy out of the building if and if really you lost. make the mistake don't you that's in the first period don't you think that you've got 50 minutes or whatever was left that you're going to go and try and do something to rectify yeah. it bump some yeah. guys get in front of the net create some havoc score a goal turn the moment nothing yeah right <laughs> nothing not great uh it's funny coming up there's another team that's in trouble we'll talk about with yeah. that with the road more ahead that. it's more fun for village honda uh village honda of course you know they're partners of ours on barn burner and afterburner this season as well northwest auto mall over 400 vehicles of the used, the pre-owned variety in their dealer group. Also, new inventory arriving every day at Village Honda, where the vehicle pricing is MSRP. VillageHonda.com for more information. All models, all budgets, and again, uh, huge access to more vehicles in that dealer group. Village Honda located in the Northwest Auto Mall. The road ahead is this. The Somebody's Got a Win Bowl at Commonwealth Stadium, Rhett. Oilers, uh, last I checked, trailing. We'll get the update there. It was 3 nothing at one point for the Rangers, who looked very good in Calgary the other night. And I don't know that things would look terribly different tonight. Uh, here's your update. You probably have the final in front of you already. 3 uh, nothing. your final. They are blanked on home ice. Identical score to the Calgary Flames. The Blue Shirts beat the Oilers and the Blues beat the Flames. Luckily for these two Alberta teams, they will play each other on Sunday, which means somebody We'll get a win in two points. Someone's getting two points. Look out. <laughs> Misery loves I, company, hey? It might be <sighs> more stressful to be in Edmonton than Calgary. Well, I think it, it it is in a way. Like, I absolutely think this team is not nearly as good as the Oilers, but a slower start in Edmonton has larger ramifications. Mm -hmm. They've got two years left of Leon Dreisaitl, and if you can hang some banners, you can convince these guys to hang around. I believe that. But if they look around and they don't see enough around them and they're not winning, why would you hang around? Well, and you know what we say it all the time. You're not winning. You're not having fun. And yes. these guys are expected to win. And I think all the expectations. They have much more likelihood of coming out of the spiral that they're in than the Flames do. Yeah. But still, it's something that's not right. Sunday's Edmonton. Flames will then come home for one against Dallas, who are has been dubbed a cup contender. And unlike Edmonton, looking the part early. Uh, then it's off to Seattle, their first game against the Kraken in that beautiful rink in the Pacific Northwest. Then they return home for a game against Nashville on Tuesday, the seventh threat. That's their next four. So it's away home, away home, back and forth they go before a three-game roadie through Eastern Canada, Toronto, Ottawa, back-to-back -back on a weekend, and then Montreal on a Tuesday. <sighs> 
that's a lot there. Uh, I guess one at a time, fellas. Focus on the outdoor game. I'm sure there'll be uh, the, 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 the usual huge smiles and selfies and interaction with the fans will be a little more muted this year. I got a question. Was there a closed door? Do we know? Uh, Jack, Jack is a... The second part of my question is, if there wasn't, does that also, again, say, say something that, that there's something wrong with this team? Because if they're eight games in and playing this way and they know the pressure... Should they not be having a meeting? Let's look at some post game comments because I think uh, that's you know whether they what they talk about what they don't and who's in the room we only know so much. Here's Nikita Zadorov. I just want to apologize to our fans. We're playing like shit right now. <laughs> that's courtesy Eric Francis on Twitter at Eric Francis. Uh, Mackenzie Weger post game. The Blues broke our will in the third period. Oof, that's um, game eight. Broke your will. Guys, it was a two-goal lead before an empty netter. Like, yeah, in the third. Like, what do you think? A goal changes everything. That's uh, that is absolutely no good. Um, here's another one. Huska, we didn't work tonight, period. We deserved the booze. Whew. <laughs> Honest. I like it. I, yeah, and honesty is great, but what fans come for is is not, hey, let's go, let's uh, are you are you coming to the honest press conference tonight? <laughs> no, you want to go fucking watch a team win. <laughs> they didn't do that. You're not selling seats to the honesty press conference. I appreciate those quotes and it underlines what's happening here, but the fans would rather have you not apologize and see a better product, please. Oh. Robert Mulligan as well. In the third, the team was not, didn't even show up in the first. Like, what do you mean in the third they broke your will? You never had a chance the first two periods. Uh, Crown Royal is presenting the generous guy. We appreciate uh, Crown jumping on barn burner and afterburner as well. The generous guy, generosity lives in the small things. Crown Royal, crown everything. There's no one way to be generous, right? There's endless ways and a crown for everyone. Crown Royal, crown everything. We'll be back after this brief message. It doesn't take a million dollar donation or name on a hospital wing. This, this is where generosity lives. It's that season out here, by the way, flood and rink season. Is it's it? just all that snow. Already? I got to get stomped down. Oh yeah. Yeah. Overnight lows have been, this is good ice weather. All right. Yeah. I know you're missing that. Well, I was just going to say, it will melt. You know it that. will, but maybe you get a few skates in first. You'll see. I uh, want to tell you, Greta's going to be uh, Afterburner's home for some viewing parties, uh, parties this season. We already had our season opening viewing party at Greta. we got another event mid-November. I don't want to give away too much, but if I said mid-November and a Thursday, we'd have football and flames and a nugget debt payment. Do you remember the nugget bet? Could you explain uh, that in layman's terms to people? That's 42. Pinder's got to eat 42 nugs. Oh. And they it's got great point. nuggets at, at Greta. The problem, they're quite ample. They're, they're, they're good size. They're healthy. They're, it's a large 42. 42? I, I, I'm sorry to the cleaning staff at Greta for what they may have to deal with later that night in November. <laughs> Stay tuned for that. It's been fun hanging out at Greta. You can check out more at GretaBar.com. It's located at uh, 213 10th Avenue Southwest, right between 1st and 2nd Street on 10th Ave. Over 50 arcade games from vintage to state-of-the-art. Load up the credits on your Greta game card and get at it. Also, great menu. Huge uh, selection of beverages as well, Retro. They got a great mm. little bar there. Can't wait to see you out there. Let's drink them. You were uh, saying right. something before I interrupted you. Would you have a comment on the cleaning staff for Greta? Any oh, I said tips? nobody, the, with the bet, nobody said you had to keep them down. So, you... Yeah, that is true. I mean, I don't know how desperate I'll get, but if we have to go bulimic to get it done, is that an option? I don't know. I don't want to make light of that. That's, that's a serious illness, but uh, hmm. not the best. Red, you want something a little lighter, a little, a little funner, a little more uplifting? Fun, yes. The Let's Oilers get the lost. Bleep was... out of here in January. We are going. It is the first ever barn burner vacation. We're heading January 11th to 13th to Phoenix, Arizona, Tempe, to be exact, for the Flames and the Coyotes, and Scottsdale, to be exact. If I know how you roll in Phoenix, because that's where all the tasty steak and delicious beverages are, and the fancy nice pools. Spots. Some nice spots. Nice spots. 
yeah. Uh, come with us. That's the cool thing. You got your friend, you're a fan of the show. Uh, we, we, I always bump into people and say, I love the show. This is great. What are you doing live events? Uh, how about one better? Come on a roadie with us. We land on a Thursday. It's a game that night at the mullet arena, 4,500 seats. We've got like North of 30 of them. That'll be fun. And then Friday in Phoenix, that'll be fun. And we'll fly home on Saturday. I know there's top golf. There's been talk about real golf. There's been talk about, is there an NBA game? Maybe there's a soccer game, whatever it is. There's lots to do in in uh, the Phoenix area. Come with us. Cost is $14.99 per person. It is the barn burner vacation. That's based on double occupancy rooms, flights, hotels, transportation to and from the airport, and tickets to the Flames and Coyotes. Nationgear.ca to get your barn burner vacation tickets. And it's brought to you by Alberta blue cross there's only one thing than sharing memories and that's making new ones alberta blue cross travel insurance protects your memories and more wherever travel takes you visit ab.bluecross.ca slash travel for more information alberta blue cross celebrating life's memorable moments inspired by hockey if you're coming on that trip there'll be memories i i can't think of a single trip that we did when we used to do our our big trips at the old shop annually that didn't have about like 15 doozies of stories like the Nashville one we could fill a week of, of stories from that trip Boston was a blast uh LA Boston, was quite something I uh, yeah and and then you missed Miami good lord it's fun to hang with the barn burner fellas <laughs> that's that's the that's our guarantee I'll give you I'll give you the guarantee on that one you won't be you won't be let down and thank you to Alberta Blue Cross for teaming up with us on that I sold a bunch already people are, t- are talking well, hey, everyone yeah. sees the snow out there right now, and they're like, I can't go like this for six months. And again, it's not in the, in the Christmas holiday season, but do get it in the calendar soon because things get busy, and then usually people hunker down in Jan. We want to hunker down in the sun. Yes. We don't want to hunker down. We want to get out. We want to get some vitamin D, Rhett, which you, you're a big proponent of vitamin D, I especially in these D. dark winters here. Started already. You got to go get some sun. Hang out by the pool. What do you want to see on Sunday, or or is it just the 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 bar is so low now, especially after reading those post game comments? Those are harsher than mm-hmm. we were on them. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's two teams that are struggling mightily. One with the loftiest of expectations, and the other that seemingly, you know, smothered any hope that there was. It's just tough to envision any sort of. This is the problem. Is the that- Flames team making the playoffs. You know, we we saw them come out with effort and heart, uh, and they played a good game against the Rangers, and they lost. Yeah. And, and that then, was first back, yeah. yeah and, Had a lead. And so, but would you say that the effort was the same for tonight? I wouldn't. I thought it was. No. Good. And this I, was it, against a lesser team. And it I was, still for sure. You got dominated. And the scare, it just doesn't feel like, like what, what what am I hoping for on Sunday? I'd like a good game. I'd like an overtime game and I'd like some action and some some physical play and maybe some goals. Yeah, I'd like an entertaining hockey game. But even if they go win that game, they're oh, gonna have to do more than that to bring me around to going, yay. I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No. And I, I wouldn't suggest that one game is going to change the course of the season. It is a big spotlight on the team and they're so miserable. I think a lot of the fun of this thing might be sucked out, but if you did, you know, have a, a nice victory, that's probably all right. Everyone can take a deep exhale. Then you got a couple off days. They only play twice in the next six days. They won't play again until Wednesday against Dallas after the outdoor game. And it's a couple days away from now, the outdoor game. Uh, if you had some time to practice and to feel good about a result, that'd be nice. Dallas is good, though. Yeah. Careful what you're coming back to, even if you do win. And if you lose, I just like, when do you start the sale? Like, wh- where do you, when, do, how, how early do you put up your yard sale signs in the neighborhood? You go to the telephone pole and staple them in. Is it the Friday for the weekend? Is it a month ahead? Like, what, what are we doing here? Well, mix in a few wins so that Conroy can pretend he's not Ooh. wholesaling. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's one of those things where the worse it goes, the worse the offers are going to be given to you in a weird way, isn't it? And well, and it's like, okay, until, well, I just have to wait till the deadline yes, and then you'll the actually show your cards, you jerks. Yeah, till the deadline. And then you just pray upon pray that guys don't get injured. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and to be fair, they've got 
Okay, so Shillington we're going to leave out of it because he's not here. He may be, he may not. We don't know. Zadorov's a free agent. Tana's a free agent. Hannafin's a free agent. Lindholm's a free agent. Like You're talking about five guys there. The odds of one of those guys being hurt isn't low no. like that's that's uh, that's that's 20 percent of your roster that's if you have and an I, injury it's it's a basically a one in four chance that it's one of them and i can tell you that the 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 further out of it you are the heart less they the less into it you are and the oh, more it's, especially have, for the right vets. i mean if you yes. call like you call up the solyovs uh, uh, solyov oh, all of a sudden i can't say it Solovyov, uh, that you're going to get that. If Zari comes up, he's going to give you some effort. You liked that, didn't you? <laughs> Not everyone had a great night at the broadcast either. <laughs> yeah, you'll get the young guys. They'll be excited. But, I mean, what are you thinking if you're Blake Coleman? You got another three years left Oof. on your deal? And I think he likes winning. That's all he's been about. But again, the, and it's like you're not moving part, him with that number. But the best part, again, for the Conroy thing is, if someone phones in Coleman, yes, absolutely, and shave a million off. And yours. if the owner will eat dough, I think what my thought would be, and you can correct me on if you feel differently. Well, I shouldn't say correct me, but like tell me if you disagree. I think Craig Conroy is given X amount of dollars to spend on his roster. And if the Calgary Flames are paying a million bucks for someone to play elsewhere, that just comes out of the 83 and a half million he's given Craig to pay for his own team. It's basically just like the cap. Now, if you're going to go, you know, bring in a dead guy and put him on LTIR or something, that that that's a different ask. But I, I really don't think, would Murray care if he had $80 million on team payroll and three and a half on salary elsewhere, or if it was just 83 and a half, all guys there, like it's the same amount of his money. It's not more of anything. And it helped you theoretically get an asset back. Don't know. I can't. Yeah. I can't. Into the weeds on that. Um, Greg Resort and Casino. Nice we when there. it's not our money. It is easy to spend other people's money. I have noticed that. Do you notice that? I do. At your house? Yeah, it's really. <laughs> My wife notices that with me sometimes. Mm. Oh, yeah. Well, sure. Yeah. By all means. Yeah. You you pick the restaurant or everything. Oh, yeah. Your bell. Sure. Cool. Yeah, I'll get the next one. Alligator arms. Uh, I was telling you about uh, the Grey Gold Resort and Casino. You got a favorite team. You got a favorite sport. It is the season. All four sports are rolling. We got the World Series starting on Friday. We have NFL fully going. CFL playoffs around the corner. NBA started a couple days ago. Raptors won an O-Ret. And, of course, NHL hockey is here, baby. That's all. Like, what, what more could you want? This is the best time of year for sports. And the stage bar at the Gregor Resort and Casino, an incredible place to be. Cheer on your favorite teams there. Large screens, friends, drinks, delicious food. Let's go. It's the Gregor Resort and Casino.ca for more information. Happy hour. Make the most of the day. Two till five at the stage bar and Blaze Bar and Grill. Two till five. That's happy hour. That's three hours of happy hour. That is, they are lying to us. That is not a happy hour. That is a happy three hours. I love that. And Good food and specialty drinks all starting at $5. Starting from $5, visit greggoresortandcasino.ca for more information. We were there the other night. It was buzzing. Amal, our pal from Toronto, was in town. He came and watched the show. We had, he, was, he came over and he had the whole napkin tucked into his, his nice. chowing it's down on some safe. grub. Be Midnight, safe. you still get good Sass. food there. Sauce on his shirt. That's right. Uh Okay. Is there any other closing thoughts or I guess, Jack, if any other comments that, that, uh, that I've been missing, I'm not really, I, I've been glancing at the comments here or there, but not religiously reading them all. Uh, it's good thing. We have a captain this season to keep the team in line. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. I, I, I feel like even if you, if you had Sidney Crosby's uh, leadership skills here that you might not have one more win. That's tough. Is anyone in Alberta laughing harder than Daryl Sutter right now? Daryl, well, someone vindicated right now, Rats. I was thinking that earlier while watching the game. Well, he's in the chat. He's here. Um, he, he, he's watching the show. He's in the comments. Daryl's a big fan of the shows. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's enjoying this. He's getting paid, too, to, to watch this. Yeah. He's probably like four million hey, bucks a year. Lord, yeah. they let me go, or I'd be sitting there pissed off. <laughs> Yeah, and and again, this was always nuanced. This was never one thing. 
but it was the, the, the one thing that you had to do first was this was what the bill of goods we were told by Don Maloney, mm-hmm. Greg Conroy, the players, a bunch of players bunch of living. And I get it. You can't just get rid of a player, especially when it's all signing bonus money and Huberto's contracts. So if it was never going to work with Huberto and Daryl, you may as well cut clean and give them a fresh start sooner rather than later, but it just doesn't look better. It doesn't look better. It doesn't look like it's going to get better. And it, it's just, what's this worst contract ever? It would it be ha- hard to find a worse deal in the NHL right now. I don't think it's close. If he's going to be a 50 point defensive liability, and even that feels lofty, what, like tonight? Ooh, not a lot going on there. Mm. When's the team Halloween party, though, Rhett? Yes. That's what we want to know. They'll have great outfits for the outdoor game. Yeah. I bet you that's when they'll do it. They are off from Sunday till Wednesday after the game in Edmonton, and then they don't play again till Dallas Wednesday. That'll be that's your Monday night or Tuesday night or your Monday night Halloween party. That, that's so uh, there you are. It's great. Well, I, I go for it. It's yeah. not going to hurt anything. <laughs> no, that's fair. Smiling is it's going to feel odd, but it it won't hurt. You can give it a try, fellas. Last one for you. Keep your uh, Eyes peeled for this. Dailyfaceoff.com is the website where Frank Valley is the grand poobah of. You get your line combos, fantasy hockey resource, all kinds of great writing, starting goalies. And now, Wendy's letting you win some real food with your fantasy teams this year and dailyfaceoff.com. For those of you who smoke the competition, Wendy's rewarding you with weekly prizes that will have you savoring the true taste of victory. But if your team doesn't deliver or get you a W, then the new Wendy's barbecue bacon cheeseburger delivered to your door instead may. So you don't have to show anyone your very real tears. Uh, it all kicks off in the coming days. Sign up, play the daily face-off survivor pool to win weekly prizes like that new barbecue bacon cheeseburger from Wendy's mm-hmm. available now for a limited time. I can't wait to get this thing going. We're going to be picking players. If they get a point, you stay alive. If your streak ends, uh, too bad. But don't worry, we're starting another one next week. And if you get through the week on a nice little streak, there'll be prizes to be won, including some of that great Wendy's grub. Hmm. You take Huberto? Not now. I'm going to wait till he's in form. Okay. You know, not playing a lot of games. I mm, want to see him, get him when he's hot. I think Jack Hughes would be the guy I want to Jack's get right now. Good. 17 points in six games, Jack. Pretty good. Pretty good. Right, it's late there. Thank you so much for your efforts tonight. Nearly 500 people watching right now. Thank you to all of you. We appreciate this very much. Uh, it, it, it is weird. People seem to hate watch Afterburner. The worse they play, the more people do. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and, and we could absolutely go bananas on them. Let's, well, we have a show tomorrow, and they, Boom will be here for that, and we'll get into further detail about where exactly we're at and what the heck this team is doing. Outdoor game coming up. So excited. Easy. See you in Edmonton. Oof. That's afterburner for this night, uh, 3 nothing loss tonight. Get some sleep. Congrats sleep on your first game, Ilya. You say his last name. <laughs> Soloviev. Thank you. Good night.